Hello, and welcome to the Path to Programming. I'm Steven. The purpose of my YouTube channel is to teach fellow software developers the tools they need to succeed in the enterprise world of software development. I have been a professional software engineer for two years and have been programming for over seven years. I currently work in a microservices environment where we build APIs to power the data for our mobile apps and website. The portfolio which I am in uses an extreme programming methodology, also known as XP. We pair program every day and regularly use test-driven development, TDD, to write automated tests for our features. Well, enough of the introductions. Let's begin. I would like to talk about a new personal project I am working on. The project we will be working on is a budget tracker application. For the minimum viable product, MVP, users should be able to log in, register, see previously added expenses, add new expenses, add new budget allowances, and edit existing budget allowances. The user home screen will display a budget breakdown for the current month. Nice to have features will be the ability to view reports and analysis of the previous month's spending. We won't wait until the entire back end is built before moving on to the front end. This way we can get feedback on the design and functionality of the REST API. Nothing I say here today is set in stone. The days of waterfall are behind us. We must be agile and get a product in front of customers and continuously get feedback on what is working and what is not. The back end application will be developed using Java and Spring Boot. The data source for our application will be MongoDB. Since I don't want to bother managing user credentials, we will be using the Firebase Admin SDK. The only Firebase feature we will be making use of at this time is Firebase Auth. Firebase Auth will store user credentials and return an access token that the front end will use on subsequent requests. The front end application will be a React app. It will make calls to the backend server for all of its dynamic data. These apps will be separately deployed to AWS using some sort of CI CD pipeline. I'm leaning towards Travis CI at the moment. I have used Jenkins and Pivotal Concourse, but I'd like to try something new this time. We will make use of Docker for local testing, integration testing, and possibly for our production deployment using AWS Elastic Container Service. We will be using a Trillo board to manage the backlog, features, and documentation for this project. This is a private Trillo board, but I will reference it from time to time before working on a new feature to understand what we will be working on. Here are some of the endpoints that the backend will expose for the React app to consume. So far, there are eight different endpoints Mostly focus on the domain objects of users, expenses, and budget allowances. Thinking about how our front end will look ahead of time will help us to understand what our REST API design should look like. We don't want to be exposing endpoints that don't make sense for our front end. I've created a prototype using JustinMind. This is the user home page which will display a budget breakdown of the current month. Users can also add new categories whenever they want by navigating to the budget page. This is all the screens I have for now, but I will show more of the prototype in upcoming videos. I plan to develop this application alongside of you. I will explain the concepts and technologies we will be working on, and will strive to answer the question of why we are doing something, rather than just answer how. Please follow along if you wish, and please like and subscribe if you are enjoying the content. Let's end this video by starting the way all Spring Boot apps start. Start.spring.io, the Spring Initializer. We will be using Spring Boot version 227. For this project, I am choosing to use Maven. I usually use Gradle, but I'm going to try out Maven after a long while. 
Uh, enter your preferred group name. I will be using tech.path to programming. We will be using Java 8. Uh, Java 14 was just released a couple months ago. However, Java 8 has everything we need, and most projects nowadays are still using Java 8. Now let's add some dependencies. We are going to be using Lombok, Spring Web, Spring Actuator, Spring Hadios, Spring Data MongoDB, and Embedded MongoDB Database for our integration test. We will eventually add Spring Security to handle the JWT authentication, but we can add that later on. Now just click Generate and open the project in your preferred IDE. I will be using IntelliJ for this project. Since we are using Lombok, we have to first do a little bit of setup. First, make sure you have the Lombok plugin in your IDE. Second, we must enable annotation processing. Now the Java compiler can recognize the Lombok annotations. Lombok is useful for getting rid of a lot of the boilerplate code that is often needed for Java. We will talk more about Lombok in future videos. Well, that's all I have for you today. Next time, we will focus on MongoDB, and we will talk about how to structure data in a NoSQL way. Thanks for watching.